Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody had a good day. Hope a lot of you guys are staying awake. Yeah, that's kind of what the market is right now. Before we get started again, uh, like, share, uh, subscribe if you are uh, a brand new trader. Again, I try to give uh, a nightly opinion based on data, right? Not opinion, uh, not what I think is going to happen six months from now or I think is going to happen this way. It's based on data, raw data, and that's the only thing we could trade off uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And the market is just basically in a kind of a holding pattern, right? Uh, we've discussed this now for a couple of days. Um, when you look at the broad strokes of things, you can see here the market, at least the QQQs, they keep on getting rejected off this 20-day. You know, tell me, you know, stop me if you heard this before, right? We talked about this exactly last night. And it continues to get rejected off the 20-day. It just, it feels like, there's not enough juice, right? That's the best way I can say it. There's not enough juice to really get this market going higher, but there's not enough fear yet to get the market going lower. Keep this in mind though, okay? All this is happening below this 297 level that we've covered uh, in nausea leading up to the last two weeks. So this is gonna be a pretty big level for the bulls to defend. They did not defend. And here we are now building a new base, one, two, three, four, five, Six days tomorrow will be day seven, right? Nearly a week, in a week and a half or so that we're basing below the 20-day moving average. And again, I've always said, and especially if any of you guys uh, watch the free uh, PS60 workshops, if you have not seen it, uh, it it's, it's absolutely free, guys. If you've ever been, uh, if you've ever been uh, curious about pivots, I'm sure Kyler will put it into the description. I think it's like three, four hours uh, breaking down uh, the PS60 theory. It's not all of it, but it's like three, four hours. You'll you really get an understanding. And uh, in that, you know, in that workshop, there's two two workshops, the PS60, the foundation, and the PS60 uh, part two is like a total of like 10 hours. But in that, you know, in the first one, I believe, it's so long ago that I recorded it, uh, the longer a stock or anything, in this, in this instance, we're talking about the Qs, the longer a stock sits in that range, eventually when it comes out, the move is very, very aggressive. Uh, so if you've been noticing for the last, you know, four or five days, it's been super duper tight, right? Some stocks look like they're strong, but most of them look like they're weak. Then you have some days uh, that the market looks like it's about to fall off a cliff and the bulls defend their prices and the market starts moving back higher. And that's kind of where we are. And the one thing I will say, just by looking at this raw data, the fact that we broke down uh, below this 297 level and just putting in lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, we have to pay attention to this 293 level. If you guys notice, the last two days, the keys have held three, 293 twice. You see it? They held it twice yesterday, held it twice today. That's going to be a very important number because if they can't get above the previous channel's highs, and you can see here, it's gotten rejected at the 296 level now, back-to-back -back days, that's lower uh, than the 20-day moving average. Eventually, if we do start building below uh, this 390, uh, this 293 level on the queues, then we will challenge back uh, the 290 area that we had on the 200-day moving average, right? You see this whole big macro level, okay? So uh, 293, that's a level that the bulls need to defend. And if you are looking at it from the bearish side, and again, you know, I'm, I'm looking to trade wherever the money is going. Now. Literally, wherever the money flow is going, that's where I'm going. I don't care which way the market breaks. I just want to see the market break one way or another. And again, when it does, it's going to be a very, very big expansion. Until then, right, for the last four or five days, what have we seen? Like, what have we talked about yesterday? We talked about random stocks. Today, when you see the pivots, again, for the exception uh, of Meta, again, random stocks. When you have random stocks, you have random results. But that's what happens right now. And beggars can't be choosers. And the markets are contracting. When they finally get out of the range, I do believe whether the break is higher or lower. And right now, it looks like it's going to be lower, but again, anything could happen. That's why we always say uh, be prepared on both sides. But if we start losing uh, this 293 level on the queues, I do believe we're going to start testing back this 290. And 290 is going to be super duper important because if we lose 290, it's going to be a moonshot. Well, actually a waterfall, you know, a waterfall back 
uh, to the 50-day moving average, which is super duper important of uh, uh, potential uh, price action moving forward, which is going to be that 285. Uh, when you look at the SPYs, right, you kind of have the same thing here. You know, we had a really nice move here, really nice short on the break of the 296 level uh, level uh, three days ago, went down to the 393 change as well. Look at it. It's back to this two, 396, guys. Just watch the SPYs. They start giving up this 396 tomorrow. You see it? Right? It's the last two days of worth of lows. If we start losing uh, this 396 back on the SPYs, then we're going to go back to uh, the lows from three days ago, from 393s. And again, that's where things get hairy. You know, we start losing uh, this 393 level. This is when things get really, really hairy. So the bulls, you know, they're going to need some work. They're going to need some, you know, they're going to need to get off the mat. They're going to need to, uh, like like Rocky Balboa, you know, absorb all the punches they've been taking and uh, falsify, you know, falsify rallies and get stuffed and all that bumps and bruises. Wake the hell up, because if not, I'm telling you, Darth Vader's coming out. Dun, 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 right? We, all that good stuff. All of us in the web are we know what Darth Vader looks like and what he sounds like. And when he comes out, usually is a great, great potential uh, for a lot of waterfalls. So you have uh, 396 defense for the spies. You have uh, 293 defense in the queues. And those are the levels, guys. Again, you do not want to be long if those levels start getting breached. Again, this means some really great value uh, to the downside if that happens. The question is, if, if is it going to happen? We, again, we don't know. I have no idea, right? We're only preparing for it. But if it doesn't happen, we'll obviously revert back to the upside channels. But that's the plan. Uh, when you look at a lot of charts, when the queues started breaking down from the 297 level, a lot of names started coming down with them and they never recovered. Like, look at Microsoft, right? Never recovered. Microsoft is very, very close to losing its lunch again. Look at Apple, right? Apple's ready, start ready and giving back this whole channel again. Uh, look at Netflix. Had a really nice run, right? Really nice run off this uh, uh, to a 314 level. Got rejected back to the 50 day. And look at it, it's just it's just like the queue sitting there back to back to days. If Netflix starts losing the bottom channel here, it could go back to 214, right? So very, very uh, important. Like look in the video. And this is kind of how, how it really shows me the strength and weakness of, of a particular interval, right? NVIDIA several times had an opportunity to take out its earnings highs, right? Several times. And there was some pretty big option flow. It doesn't mean they can't, right? It doesn't mean we could be having this conversation four days from now and you go, oh, guys, we're at the top of the channel on the earnings breaks of, of, of NVIDIA, right? The point is it's not doing so. And when it's not doing so, the buyers are telling you the buyers are on strike. It's not because they don't want to. You, see, you know, you see a lot of traders, oh, this is the day, this is the day. And it was almost the day today, right? And got uh, back up to this uh, 238 level, but it just died as well, right? So, you know, when you start seeing strong stocks, leader names that just can't get over the next hurdle on, uh, especially on a good catalyst like earnings, that's a problem. Uh, even a name like Tesla, right? Tesla had a chance to really go nuts today. It really did. It gapped up today, $4, uh, everything was good. And then the buyers just left, right? It buyers left, came all the way back down to the 10-day moving average. They have their event today, right? Tomorrow, excuse me. They have their event tomorrow. And let me give you guys um, some important uh, some important areas off that event. Uh, it starts, I believe it starts tomorrow. Um, I believe, let me see. Okay, so here's here it is. So tomorrow, March 1st, right? Tomorrow, March 1st is Tesla's investor day agenda right so 11 o'clock in the morning there's a specific time there's a check-in then there's a tour plan right there's a tour plan and demo rides right like for the ch ch children from three o'clock to four th to th from three o'clock to four thirty right so there's an hour and a half of adults being kids which is cool getting you know some demo rides from the plate and all that stuff and then you have the keynote address from from three to four thirty and then 4.30 to 5.30 is the Q&A, right? So 4.30 to 5.30, so that's 7.30 Eastern time, the Q&A starts. Um, I don't know how the price action is going to be tomorrow. I, you know, I, I like we talked about last night in the video, I assume that there was going to be a play today that the buyers were going to try to, you know, to run it into the event. They tried, right? They tried numerous times. We saw a lot of really still good institutional buying money flow came into the stock, the 220, the 225 weeklies, but they just couldn't do it, right? They couldn't do it as well. So I think for tomorrow, you know, I'm watching this thing on both sides, right? 
Because again, like we said, there's always a possibility that they could sell into the event, right? The problem is when they start speaking, right? When Eli's, uh, Elon starts speaking, it's going to be 7.30 at night, 8 o'clock at night. So by the time he's done, the ECNs are going to be closed tomorrow. So the real price action is probably going to come for Thursdays, right? Thursdays price action. And I do believe that we have to be ready on both sides because if this is one of those sell, sell the new scenarios on, you know, just the way they had in the AI day, just the way they had the battery day back in the day, believe me, I remember, um, you know, we have to be ready on both sides of the market to take advantage. Again, you can't trade with rose colored glasses, have the blinders on and say, no matter what, yeah, Tesla's going to 230. Yeah, yeah I get it because you wanted to. But again, there's a whole side of the market that might feel uh, completely different uh, than you. And again, at the end of the day, it's not about opinion. Uh, it's all about price action. So we talked about uh, the importance of the Q's levels for tomorrow, the SPY's levels for tomorrow. Uh, let me give you guys, uh, you know, let, first of all, let's talk about some pivots today. Again, like I said, this wasn't one of those scenarios that the market is just giving you a lot of great moves. I mean, look what we have here. You know, look what we have here on the watch list right? On, on the pivot watch, FIVN. FIVN did fine. There was nothing wrong with FIVN, right? But when was the last time you heard me talk about FIVN, right? FIVN 67.59, if it builds below, can flush. Here is FIVN. Oops, FI, right? FIVN, right? We talked about FIVN, I think even the last night on the video, FIVN, it went down about a dollar and a half, closed at the lows. Fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Then you have uh, the QQQs. Again, this is the same level. It kept on holding. We just talked about that level. Uh, Meta was actually the, 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 the shining start of the day today. It really was. A nice move today on Meta. Uh, 173.70 needs to build. Literally, this was the only stock that was very, very strong. So it busted out very, very aggressively. It went all the way as high as like 77.50s. I had a nice little scalp on it. Uh, like a dollar and change, nothing, nothing, nothing crazy. But, but again, that's kind of what the market we are. We're not going to get a nineteen dollar move on something if the rest of the market is going through uh, congestion. There's no way. There's, there's just not enough room on any stock to get uh, uh, to get those type of moves. But again, just take whatever you can. Uh, ZM reversing back on earnings really didn't do. It, you know, it went through seventy three, put in a low of seventy two eighty nine. Basically held that seventy three and kind of reversed back. Uh, this little sucker had a nice move before earnings came out. Uh, VZIO, uh, $11 calls, needs to base over 10. Nice little move. And again, it got killed after the close because of earnings. But, you know, nice move. It took out 10 and went all the way up to the 1050s before earnings came out. Uh, so good job for all you guys that took that. Uh, Tesla, again, you know, try to get above 209, right? Try to get above 209, you know, only went up about 40 cents. It really just shows you how there's just not enough juice uh, in this tape. And I believe uh, that is it. So that's it, guys. We're in the spin cycle all together. You know, don't think, uh, you know, your, your favorite social media celebrity is looking at the market different from you, right? Everybody's looking at the market exactly the same way. We're watching the price action the same way. You know, I, I, I don't like what I'm seeing so far from the bulls. Um, I don't like the fact that they just couldn't get back above uh, couldn't get it back above supply four days in a row. All these bad wicks, you know, all these bad wicks here. Uh, but the point is, the longer we can't rally and they start taking down that 393 level and ultimately down to the 200 day moving average, we're going to have some problems. Okay, well, we're not going to have some problems. But if you're an investor and you don't know these levels, you're probably going to find yourself in a very, very uncomfortable situation. So, again, guys, take precaution before it happens. It's too late after the fact, right? We know our levels. We have our game plan now just every single day. We wait patiently for everything to confirm. Guys, God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow.